Hey everyone, here I am with Microsoft Flight Simulator on the Xbox Series X having a look at VFR navigation. So this is visual flight rules and how to use the outside worlds to navigate. I did have a little look at this and record it and then stupidly overwrote it, which was quite annoying. Um, so I'm going to have another look at it so you can see it. I've done some of it. I didn't do the last one though, but we'll go through them again. So we'll start with departure. So we're going to fly off, do a little left turn, go over the runway again, and then try and go on a heading of 41 degrees. Now this is quite confusing. Um, so I'm going to start the flight and uh, talk to you about it while we go. Um, I find it really hard to read the little heading system inside the cockpit because it's just got funny numbers that don't seem to <laughs> really relate to the heading. Um, maybe that's just I'm stupid and I can't read it right. Quite possible. Um, but I did notice if you go to the external view of the plane, you get a more accurate um, sort of little summary above the compass that shows you where the 41 degrees is that you're looking for. Um, so we're going to do a bit of a combination of inside and outside the plane. Um, so for each degree off your route, blah, blah, blah. Oh, no, we missed that. Right, ready to fly. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Today we're going to leave our familiar airport of Sedona and venture south to reach Flagstaff Airport. To guide us, we will rely on the nav log. It references the different legs necessary to reach our final destination. Our first goal is to fly over the runway center at 6,500 feet with a heading of 41 degrees. By doing so, we will be perfectly set up to engage with the first leg of the nav log. After takeoff, we will continue crosswind as if we were following the standard traffic pattern. However, we won't turn downwind. Instead, we will continue climbing to 6,500 feet before turning on course toward the runway center. Okay, you can take off whenever you're ready. Marvelous! Right, so we'll slap the brake off, bang on the accelerator. So the, the brake is uh, left on the D-pad, accelerator is A. I'll try and give you some pointers as we go. Right, so off it goes. You can t accelerate before you go if you want, like I did there. I swear I hit left on the D-pad, it didn't do nothing. Nothing! God damn it. Right, um, so the speedo, top left. You've got to get that to at least 45 before you start pulling up. But I'm going to give it some serious beans before we go. We want some good speed. Speed, speed, speed! Okay, now we're going to go up. So, if you're using a controller like I am, you have to be super and gentle and just give it a the little bit of welly. So, I've got my 75 knots. Pattern, as we don't want to interfere with incoming aircraft. And my height there at the minute is... Is that 5,000 feet-ish? Yeah. Um, so, I'm just trying to keep the knots at 75 and we're just gradually going up so we're now at 5200 so if you look where the clock is in the center of the Cessna just to the top right of that is the altitude so we're on and see the clocks going up whoops so we're going slower because we're climbing quite fast so if you find that's the case you can just sort of level out for a bit and it should speed up And then just gently up, so the more vertical you go, the more it'll moan because it can't climb so fast. Uh, sorry, it can't accelerate. So we're at 5,600. Oh man, it's so tetchy. So I will put up a little movie about the sensitivity settings. I had a twiddle with them, I couldn't get it anywhere improved. The Cessna is super twitchy on a controller. It's just how it is. Um, so, solution I think is order a flight stick. They're There's about flight. seventy-five Turn pounds left. for this one called the. I think it's a Thrustmaster Hotas One. I've ordered one. It's going to take a couple of days to get it because this is just getting on my wick. And you can use it on various games, including this one, obviously. Okay, so we're doing well here, but I am so, so gently using the left stick here to do this. And now I've got to climb up to 6,500 feet, so I'm just, just up in it, up in it, up in it, up in it. Okay, so 
Okay. Still climbing a little bit, so you should be able to see. So it's on about sort of six, six, and then two point three. Whoops, dropped it a little bit there. Going a bit fast, but that's fine because we want to climb up to six thousand five hundred feet. That's pretty clean, nice. So we've sort of gone off of the runway and then uh, done like a sort of left loop, really, and now we should be coming perpendicular over the runway. The annoying thing with this, I'm going to try and use my trim now to do a fine tune. So I've got right button going on, and then I'm flicking up on the, sorry, down on the stick and then up just to try and find. It's a bit too long to reach the target altitude. All right, bumpy. You want to climb faster to reach a safe altitude. To ensure accurate navigation, you want an accurate starting point. Okay. What's more accurate than the runway you just departed from? Go ahead and position your plane above the airport. And then we're going to take a 41 degree heading. So you can see my... Oh, not quite there yet. So we're going to fly towards here. 6,500. I'm too high. Let's go down. So here you get a better idea of what everything is. So I can see I'm too high. So I'm just going to drop that down. And I'm lowering the engine. <laughs> and now I'm going to change the heading in a minute to 41 degrees and we're here nice there we go oh get the heading navigation departure well done not too bad but if you don't get that 41 degree heading in quick, you sort of um, don't get it. But there we go, we've got an A. All right. Hope that helped you. Right, on to the next one. What have we got to do? Let's go to the training menu. Right. Oh, no, I didn't want to go there. Did I? Or did I? I don't know. Anyway, VFR navigation. Dead reckoning. Navigate using heading and time estimates. Let's do it. Okay. So I've had a few goes at this. Um, I'm gonna have another go, and it's really hard I find with the controller to climb. You know, as, as soon as I start climbing, even if I try and do it gently, I seem to drop speed, even if the throttle is on full, uh, and it takes me forever to climb up to the right height. I don't know if you're experiencing the same. Love to know in the comments. Um, but I'll have another go here. I'm gonna try and go super gentle and try and do what it wants me to do. But I do find this a right pain. We're currently at 6,500 feet, about 30 seconds flight time to Sedona Airport. As we make our way toward the runway center, let's talk more about navigation. When you need to set and maintain a heading, you'll want to rely on your heading indicator. Compasses are prone to errors, especially during turns or while accelerating or decelerating. Try the trim. We're in position over the runway center. Next step is to validate the time. That's a fancy way of saying start your stopwatch. Let's see, I'm going way too high, am I? Hang on. Too high. Let's get back to 6,500. Quite sure why we're so high. Start your stopwatch. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. On the nav log, you can see our next waypoint, Munns Park, is at a 41 degree heading about five minutes away. That means we need to be on a 41 degree heading. Check your heading indicator and make your turn. Okay, I'm just trying to sort out this stupid height. Right, I find this a lot easier in this view because looking at the little tiny flaming nav compass Maintain a 41 degree heading. Um, it's hard <laughs> as you approach Munns Park the terrain level rises to maintain a safe altitude we better climb 
to 8,000 feet. Make sure you keep the same heading. Okay. Maintain full power during your climb. Maintain full power? Well, I'm not at full power. So we'll ramp up the engine. And then we'll try climb it. Now, I find this downright painful so I'm going to try the trim and see whether I can get it to give me a gentle climb so I'm holding right button and then just flicking the right stick down a little bit just to get a reasonable climb but you see my speed look how fast my speed is dropping even though I'm not climbing that fast I don't know why this is so cack I'll give it more welly also trying to keep at 41 degrees is so fidgety and that's why I find this fuse easier navigation is basically flying a given heading for a given amount of time sometimes you deviate but if you track the time flown from your last known position you'll always have at least a range for your current position Yeah, look how easy it is to go off by a couple of degrees. Yeah, look, I'm just trying to... I'm not climbing that fast, but look at my speed, how it's dropping. As I'm trying to... Just get this flaming plane to climb up to 7,500 feet. You know, that's such a gentle climb, but look at the speed, really dropping. But my on max see if that can help fear it off <laughs> the trouble is you know you're trying to keep an eye on the dial of the 41 degrees as well as the altitude as well as the speed it's, it's tough man she's going to moan at me in a minute that I've not made it there quick enough but I don't know what you can do how can you get up that, so as soon as I go aggressively up to try and climb, the speed really drops. Come on, get to 8,000 feet for goodness sake. The other thing is I'm being super gentle on that flight stick. Come on, come on, come on. Maybe there. Oops, we've gone right off there, so let's get the heading back. Okay, now get back to cruise attitude. Let the speed increase, then set cruise power at 2300 RPM. Okay. Hey, she's happy almost. You can tell I've got a bit high now. Climbing. Ah, it's still climbing. Stop climbing. I'm trying to adjust the trim, it's just not listening to me at all. There we go. A little bit. Then I'll try and do it the other way. No, happy. Fidgety pest. Just trying to use my left stick now to try and somehow balance it. It's 
So 457, I've got 545, about a minute different. Well, B, I tell you what, that's my best thing there, but it's so fidgety. Okay, let's carry on. Um, let's go train a menu. Oh, I should have just hit back, I suppose, but there we go. Right, so the next one, landmark navigation. What are we gonna do? Flagstaff, so we're gonna go from Munns off to Flagstaff with about six minutes. Okay. It just seems to be in today's today's sort of technology a very basic way of navigating. I mean, we've got a sat nav, so we really need to be sitting there with a stopwatch, time in between places to have a clue where we are. I mean, this seems very old school. Why well, have we got to look at a flaming analog degree thing in the plane? Right, what are we going to right. do? We're currently at 8,000 feet, approximately 30 seconds out from Munns Park Golf Club. While we fly over it, let's talk about landmark navigation. One of the easier methods of navigation involves following identifiable landmarks like highways. And it just so happens we have one below us. Okay. Do you see the highway on your left? Oh, yeah. That highway leads all the way to Flagstaff. Let's follow it, and we should reach Flagstaff Airport in six to seven minutes. Okay. Turn left and follow the highway. Got to try and keep my altitude. All right, let's try this one. I will try and be good and stay in the cockpit. See what we can do. Where's that highway? There, okay. To make sure we don't miss it, reset your stopwatch here and start it again. Oops. Altitude again. Sorry, a bit bumpy here. I'm just trying to get over so we can see this this highway. There it is. See, it's hard flying a plane because if you try and um, Flagstaff Airport's altitude is around seven thousand feet. Unlike in Sedona, the traffic pattern altitude there is standard. This means its altitude is 1,000 feet above the airport, which works out to 8,000 feet. We need to fly over the airport before entering the traffic pattern. Okay. Since we don't want to interfere with other aircraft already in the traffic pattern, let's fly at least 500 feet above pattern altitude. Oh, well, you would want me to do that, wouldn't you? So let's climb to 8,500 feet on the way. Keep it at full power while you're climbing. <laughs> I'm shrinking. Shrinking? Falling. That speed fall though. And the trouble is, when you're doing this, you can't see the flaming landmarks. Oh, I'm almost at stall now.
Perfect. Well. Maintain 8,500 feet until we reach the airport. But I can't see. Let's flip to the external, I don't care. Trim again. Almost. It's just so touchy. Here, obviously, I'm flying over the highway. I can't see it. <laughs> uh, so I don't know what do pilots do there. It's like I cannot see the thing I'm tracking. You just have to do that and again and go. Oh, there it is. Come back up again. I guess so. It's weird though. always fly to the side or something. Uh, I feel there's gaps in sort of the, the tutorials trying to explain things because yeah looking at a landmark in front of you is difficult unless it's very far away and then you can't see it. That does look like the airport though doesn't it? Down, just more for you than me. Let's sort of see a bit better there. That's the road I'm tracking. Yeah, how do pilots do it? I almost feel like they should have a little camera on board that shows underneath the plane. say 720 yeah so that looks about right on this one there it is Flagstaff Airport on the right side of the highway you got us here which is great but there's definitely room for improvement gee thanks lady your tuition sucks <laughs> C okay I don't know why but C <sighs> right next If I hit back here, is that where I've got to go? Nope. I do have to do as I was doing. Right, what was that one? That was landmark navigation. Okay, arrival. Descent to circuit over the runway, turn into final.
so how are you getting on with the tutorials? Are you struggling with them? I mean, these ones I've found definitely the hardest. Flagstaff Airport is right in front of us, and we're currently at 8,500 feet. That's 500 feet above the standard traffic pattern. It's a good altitude to avoid interfering with aircraft already in the pattern. Proceed above the terrain, making sure you maintain our current altitude. I can do that. I wonder why you fly over the one runway center. Is this just for practice or is this default default procedure? The plane, but it's weird because you can't. I mean, look, I can't see anything. If I keep the plane level, I cannot see a jack in front of me. I assume this is the same in plane as normally. But what do you do then? What do you do in the plane? Have you got like mirrors? Do you dip the plane? I don't know. Do you have to do this? Have to go where is it? Oh, there it is. Then panic and pull it back up again. I don't know. See, I can sort of see out my left window. It's just weird, though. You know, you don't don't drive a car like that, do you? But then I suppose normally you don't need to see at the bottom of the road, but it's pretty important in a plane to see where the heck you are. Do you know, I've just seen there's a little thing there on the... Um, if that corresponds to... We're going to land no, on runway good, 21, coming from the right to the left. We'll be following a left-hand traffic pattern, as we did in Sedona. Okay. Ready? Reduce speed to 80 knots and start a turn to the left toward a 120 degree heading. 120 degree heading. Oh, fall in a little bit. See, if I didn't have the markers, I would not have a clue. Falling. know all this stuff man it's amazing you know how do you know where you've got to go for each place that you go to you train and just go between a few landing strips how does it work I don't know Flaps it down. Come on, come on, come on.
Okay. Well, it's hard. Turn it too. I can't even see. Ah, oh, there it is. Hold on to your butts. Attempt to land this hunk of junk, and I'm not very good at landing. I'm gonna attempt to land it in here. I tell you what, I find that really hard inside the uh, cockpit, but I'm pretty pleased with that. Whew. That was painful. Good integration, but something tells me you can do even better. Probably. You have to concentrate a lot with that. I'm pleased with that though, really pleased with that. I actually done better last time I did it, but I think last time I will have moved to the external view to land. Whew, that's a bit uh, scary coming down looking where well, you can't really see. Okay, so back to the main menu. Now, this is the bit uh, where I really struggled, <laughs> which is putting it all together uh, and attempting to do all of that stuff with less help, minimal help, in fact. Um, oh, whoops, I've got the wrong thing, flight training. Uh, so VFR navigation. So I failed miserably at this before. I got lost and totally didn't know what I was doing. So we will attempt to do what she says. So we're going to go off from Flagstaff and then try and find Munn's golf course. Uh, then go over to Sedona Airport following the highway that was, wasn't it? Oh no. Oh god, you see this is why I was getting confused because before I was <laughs> I was trying to go follow the runway, um, the highway and uh, you can see that's the other way but we're going back to front so we're going to come out, going to go towards Munns and then we're going to go to Sedona. I don't know, we'll have a go. See what we can do but I got so confused with this before. Yeah, that's quite harsh really because you think if you did the first one you go oh okay i can kind of remember going to the highway and blah 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 but it's making you go back to front so you've not done any of this you know you've not let you're not taken off from this way you haven't gone this way uh, and you're not landed this way God. okay let's see what we can do We're going solo on a full VFR flight. From takeoff to touchdown, it's all you. You'll be departing Flagstaff Pulliam Airport, handling every navigational step on your way to Sedona. It's the return trip from your previous lessons. You'll be flying over the same landmarks. Do you remember them? The highway, Munns Park Golf Club. Choose whatever you're confident with. 
Dead Reckoning, Landmark Navigation, or both. This is what you've trained for. Just remember everything you've learned. And most of all, enjoy the ride. Cheers. Right, I'm gonna whip up the propeller and then I'm gonna take the brake off. Oh, the brake was already off, I think. Fair enough. Not sure why the brake was already off. I don't think it is normally. Come on, my little Cessna. Let's fly. So, this is damn hard, this thing. Um, there's a couple of things that I find confusing with this. I automatically read Munns Park Golf Course, is number, and then number two is the heading of 221 last time I did this. Totally ignored the one above. So, the 163 is what you're looking for, four Munns Golf Course, six minutes 45, and then to Sedona is the 221 degrees for four minutes 58. Right, I suppose I should take off. The other thing, is as soon as you do any sort of climb uh, your speed drops like crackers so you've got to try and do the teeniest tiniest sort of correction if you're using a controller like I am to get anywhere with this stupid thing so we've got to try and climb to seven and a half thousand feet whilst not conking out with this puny little engine of this plane within the vicinity of the airport. So you can see as soon as I do any sort of reasonable climb, the speed drops to next to nothing, as I'm already down to 60, which is damn annoying. So I come down again, let's speed up again, and then I'll go up again, and it comes down again. It's just a, I don't get why it's so slow. Is this, I assume this is realistic, but God, you've got to be patient to be a pilot because this woman gets tetchy if you don't climb quick enough and she starts going meh 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 too slow so I don't understand how you can maintain the 75 knots and get up I don't think anything's going on with my flaps is it? No look at that though so I've done a reasonable climb and now look at my speed is 50. So now we even out. Get it back up again. But the, just the tiniest, tiniest rise and the speed drops. So how on earth do you climb and hold 75 knots? Especially using a controller because it's so twitchy. I'm doing the smallest, tiniest movement on the controller to pull it up. And it is, you can see on my controls there, this is a real gentle climb that I'm doing. It's so hard to concentrate with the controller like this. So I do think that the HOTAS controller stick, or the flight stick, or whatever you want to call it, is a really uh, must if you're going to play a lot of hours on this game because the controller is just too twitchy. Yeah, and look how gentle that climb is. And it's just holding that 60 speed. Let's see if I can get it a bit more. Get this 75. I can't. I'm just so impatient. Come on, give me the 75. It is half a millimetre I'm moving between the climb and the level there. Okay, at least we're almost at height. Speed up. Ooh, 
Whoops, 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 whoops. whoops. Thousand three hundred up here. That is surely right. Give me the next thing. Position the aircraft above the runway center. Where is that? Is the runway <laughs> miles away? That'll annoy it. There we go. Oh, we went off well off there, didn't we? Damn it. So long to climb up there. Attempt trim just to try and sort things so we're a little bit gentler. Yeah, I can't find a setting that keeps it level. Maybe there. But no, no it's climbing. Seems to be in between two bits. Sorry we flew so far away from the runway center. But stick with me, Jumbo. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I think I've just gone mad, sorry. Sorry. miles away from the runway, don't we? Never mind. Right, so we're going to have to go for 6 minutes 45 towards heading 163 in a minute, but we've got to get to this um, runway centre before we, because that's our kind of like little landmark.
Okay. Then we're going to start the stopwatch and then change my heading to 163. Should have gone the other way, really. Yeah. Whoa. Totally back to front. That way. Get back up to eight and a half thousand feet. Whoops. It's like watching a drunk man, isn't it? I'm telling you, it's, it's the controller, it's not me. <laughs> I have not been drinking today. It's like nine o'clock in the morning. Which is quite impressive that I haven't been drinking. <laughs> I'm joking. Right, so we're one minute into the flight. I need to get this flaming plane. So there's that highway. Which is good because it said we can go by that, didn't it? Get up to eight and a half thousand feet. So close. Up, up, up. Oops, and off, off piste again. Slightly like that. So I'm using the tail rod there just to. There's the smallest, teeniest, tiniest turn. There we go. That's more like it. Hooray! Right, it's about halfway there, so hopefully. I mean, we've got the um, highway there. I think I'm going the right way. <laughs> Damn, we're dead, my friends. Hey, look at that. We almost, we almost know what we're doing here. Let's get that. Twiddling just that way, just a touch. so hard just to try and keep things at eight and a half thousand feet as well. So much to, to remember in this game, it's mad. Do you reckon it all becomes second nature eventually? Not sure why I can't keep this at eight and a half thousand feet, that's driving me mad as well. Oh, 
see, I flick it one way, it goes too much. Is it? I don't know, is it analogy? Just not sure. I feel sick trying to adjust it. It's constantly going upwards and downwards. So about any time in the next minute or so we should see the golf cart. It might be that little green thing straight ahead, I'm hoping. That does look suspiciously like it might be a golf course. I'm hoping. Have a little look in here, just as a change of scenery for you. That looks suspiciously like a golf course to me, boys and girls. Yeah. We're a bit behind schedule though. Definitely a golf course, isn't it? Oh, I've almost, almost got my height sorted out as well. Look at that. Wow, my timing is well out though. Yes! Success for the first part. Look at that, I sort of know what I'm doing. <laughs> so why was my time so out? Was it I was just too slow or too slow turn? I don't know, but we we done it my friends. We have got to Munns Park, so that's part one almost done. Hooray! What I would quite like about these tutorials is if it would record you like where everything's going good and then you know if you cock up next bit it'd be nice to be able to return to that bit but I don't think there's any way of doing that which is kind of frustrating. So I've got to do my best not to mess up the next bit. So it should be fairly easy from here. So we've done that one, then we've got to go reset this in a minute and then go four minutes fifty-eight at heading two two one. Yeah, we've done another thing. Okay, reset the stopwatch. Start it again. Uh and then we go away from here and then we go ahead in two two one. Low there, wanna let's get that back up. I might 
just up a touch more. So we want to be heading 221. So if you can read that normal flaming compass, you're a better man than me. Oh, lady. Okay, so we're doing alright. There could be Sedona right in the distance straight ahead of me, possibly. Gotta be, hasn't it? Awesome! Right, descent to six and a half thousand feet and set speed to 80 knots. We've got a bit of time to sort the speed and stuff out. So fly over the runway center first. Come on, let's get down to six and a half thousand feet. Oh, now where am I going? Turn left on 120 degrees, head in. Given this is such a long uh, movie, I think I'm going to attempt to fly in like this. Uh, because I don't want to crash the plane. Because <laughs> I'm still very worried about doing that. It's detained at 6,000 feet. I think you can see a bit more what's going on this way as well. Oops. Don't 
quick. concentration. It's the end of the base leg. It takes 65 knots. Come on, baby. And do this. I'll slow right down. Let's put some flaps on. Slow down. Oops. fast. Come on. Come on. Yes! Whew. Boys and girls, give me a clap, man. That was a mission and a half to complete that entire tutorial series. What's she gonna you say? Well, but you can do better. Ah, smegoff. Some people say the sky's the limit. I say it's just the beginning. All right, we done it. And I got a B. I'm really pleased with that. I hope that was useful to you. Like I say, these tutorials are really hard to make sure you understand what on earth is going on. That one obviously took me a while. Really pleased that I got the landing in there though after such a long flight. Um, thanks for bearing with me if you watch the whole thing. Uh, thumbs up, much appreciated. Comments, really much appreciated as well. I'm trying to put lots of content about Microsoft Flight Sim on the uh, Xbox Series X on here. If you like what you see, please subscribe as well. That would be hugely appreciated. Thanks so much.